Hello and welcome to Charlie's Water Shader Extravaganza. Uh, just thought I'd do a little little walkthrough of uh, the sort of features that I've been working on in my new water system. Still a work in progress, obviously. But, you know, I just thought I haven't posted a video in a while, so I thought I'd, you know, stay up to date. I'm just going to turn the wind up a little bit so that this fog disappears. Hold on. There we go. So, we got water. Uh, it is quite nice. Also going to adjust our time of day real quick, just so it's a bit easier to see. So, features. We've got refraction. We've got color based on depth. We have light scattering. So, as you know, this light goes under here. It'll turn greenish. Um, if the water was really deep, it would become a deeper blue. So that's <laughs> extremely cool. Obviously, it it works with the wind system. So if I, you know, so if I get some trees in view and we turn the wind up, um, it gets wavier with the wind system. Uh, it's got some nice little wind lines on it just for a little bit of extra spice. The waves also blow in the direction of the wind, um, which in my game is always towards world center. Uh, I've also put some paintable algae on it just for, you know, swampy areas and stuff. It's pretty, pretty cool. So there's some really preliminary interaction-y stuff, like skimming the algae off the top of it and that kind of thing. Um, there isn't any actual water interactivity with moving objects yet. That's a system that I'll be working on in the future. Uh, if I go ahead and disable all of this moss, you'll see we have ripples at the shore um, and around any sort of objects like here, anything that emits distance fields. Uh, I didn't want to go like a fully stylized, like that solid white, foamy, just because I don't think it really suits the style of the game. Uh, we've got sparkles, obviously, which are very similar to my falling sand shader tutorial thingo. So it works the same way, except I use a cube map into my specular hack. And then some really cool stuff expanded on that. I've got a river version of the water shader, which has some automatic interactivity. So you can see it's obviously got those, uh, it's got ripples around it, which is cool. Ripples to kind of fake some turbulence. And as we get over towards more sort of turbulent waters, so as the, the slope increases, it starts to create sort of buildups in front of the object and a dip behind it just to sort of emulate water you know flowing and and getting like creating a vacuum under the object and whatever and so that's just using distance fields in the direction of the texture uh, which is pretty pretty cool little thing so as you can see as i move this around and i move it over here you know it will automatically create some foam and build it up uh, it looks a little bit sort of low resolution here but once actual particle effects are enabled. So we'll have, you know, water splashes and that kind of thing. That'll sort of get hidden and look a lot cooler. Um, so as as some people suggested to me when I made my falling sand tutorial, um, they said, oh, it could be used for waterfalls. And I thought, geez, that's actually a really good point. So I've used that exact same sort of system uh, for the waterfall segment of the river. And also just, yeah, some placeable ones to place on things that are, you know, in the waterfall. There's also some mesh painting capabilities so that I can, for example, uh, you know, if there's an object stopping the waterfall, I can paint out, you know, opacity uh, wherever needed. Um, it would also be handy for things like a, a dungeon entrance that, you know, goes in there and you, you didn't want the water to be... Um, you know, in the staircase leading down. The other mesh paint channel will do foam, so you can paint foam on it. So that's what I've kind of done here, just to give it, you know, a little bit of, a uh, little bit more control over, you know, where the foam is. And um, if the automatic system doesn't pick up some stuff, then, you know, you can always create some, some trails custom. One of my favorite things about it is that I'm using a spline system to generate this um, river. And I also do some stuff based on the slope of the thing. As I, you know, make the water dip, it will become more 
turbulent. Um, and if I was to do it like this, <laughs> then, you know, it becomes transparent. It turns into that sort of falling sand shader effect. Um, obviously that goes both ways, <laughs> which, you know, uh, that's a, that's a level designer's issue. So yeah, so it's really cool because it just sort of adds like so much control. As you can see here, you know, it, it sort of auto turbulences as it goes down steeper slopes. Um, looks pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, same with here, you know, I could paint more foam in and that kind of stuff. Uh, it sort of auto foams at the edges a bit, which is just a byproduct of the, the distance field calculation that I'm using. And the river system as well as the lake system, um, as the wind intensity increases, uh, maybe not that much, but you can see the wind lines also happen to go to world origin as per the, the lore of my game. Uh, the ripples are also affected by the wind, so if it's completely still, like zero wind whatsoever, a uh, bit unrealistic, but it goes completely smooth. Uh, and then as I increase this, yeah, the ripples get a bit ripplier uh, until they go a bit, a bit redonkulous. So yeah, if I was to uh, grab this ruins mesh and bring it up through the uh, through the river, uh, yeah, you can see it. Kind of looks sort of semi semi simulated, semi realistic. It is all very cheap interaction, uh, which needs to be obviously augmented with particle systems. But you know, I, I think it looks pretty, pretty decent as is. Um, very, very happy with how it's looking. It's very, very oddly satisfying to look at when something sort of <laughs> emerges. Uh, pretty neat. Pretty neat. So I think that's going to be it for me today. Uh, if you'd like a more in-depth walkthrough of this, I may do one in the future. Since it is still a, a heavy work in progress, um, it wouldn't be any time soon. But when it is finished, I might do a more sort of in-depth kind of, you know, walk through what everything's doing, kind of like the falling sand tutorial, um, rather than a step-by-step -step thing, just kind of take you through the basics of, you know, what are the, all the processes that I'm using? You know, what does this part do? And what is this part doing? And, you know, what's that doing? And what's this all doing? And that kind of thing. Uh, I think that's a sort of a sort of a better way to teach people rather than saying, you know, let's do this step and then this step and you're kind of just blindly following along and not really thinking about it. When you are learning how to, you know, use an engine or get into technical art and stuff, it is very much about the journey rather than the the end result. If you'd like to be a part of that journey, I do stream on Twitch. We created this whole material setup live. Uh, in front of a live audience, which was a lot of fun. And it's always good to get help from people in the chat. If that does sound like your cup of tea, just head over to twitch.tv slash prismaticadev and uh, chuck us a follow and you'll be notified when I start streaming. And so with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye.